Yeah, so basically, this class is going to record IFRS 16 leases. IFRS 16 leases. Uh, previously, uh, in my days, it used to be I IS 17, but I mean, the standard has been revised. So now it's IFRS 16. My objective with you who is to help you identify a lease. When we say a lease, what is a lease and how would you be able to identify that? Then we will do what we call the lease accounting. At the financial reporting level, you are only meant to do lease accounting. You don't do lease accounting. So uh, this video will not include a lease accounting. It will not, but it's part of lease. So we won't do the lease accounting in this video. There will be a separate video I will do for lease accounting for probably the corporate reporting people. Now, then the last one will be something we call sale and lease back. Sale and lease back. All right, so these are basically what we are going to be looking at now. So let's pick it up and start achieving these objectives. So first of all, we are we want to know how to identify a lease. And for us to be able to know what a lease is in the first place, we need to know the definition because the definition is what will help us know what we are dealing with. So first of all, let's take the definition of a lease. Now, when we say a lease, what is a lease? A lease is basically a contract. It's a contract. Now, of course, contracts are always between parties. So it's a contract or part of a contract. because it can be within somebody's contract. Uh, and in that contract, it conveys the right, and this is a very key thing. It conveys the right to use an asset, to use an underlying asset. All right, for a period of time in exchange for a consideration. So that is what a lease is in exchange for a consideration. So the key things you are supposed to know is that uh, the right to use an asset. Uh, in the beginning of our lecture, if you remember those days when we started, I told you that these days, uh, the definition of, a, of an asset is your ability to use it is by control, not you owning it, substance over form, if you remember. Now, um, so you be given the right to use somebody's asset for a period of time for in exchange of a consideration. So these are the key things. So for you to achieve this objective number one in identifying a lease, what you need to locate or what you need to find is that you need to find the right to control, the right to control who is controlling the asset, all right? Control the use of the asset. So, so far as you can control the use of that identifiable asset, and you are using it for a period of time, and 
there is exchange and exchange for a consideration, then it means it means there is a lease. So to be able to identify a lease, these are the things that you need to spot. And they are all coming out of what the definition. They are all coming out of the definition. So uh let me give you an example and let's discuss this example. Sorry. Um, let's say, and I want you to listen carefully. Now, let's say A takes somebody's portable kiosk. Um, I know you know a portable kiosk. Portable kiosk means it's a kiosk, a kiosk as we know in Ghana, but it is portable. You can move it from one place to another. All right. So A leases. Uh, I, there are some terminologies by this time I, I hope you should understand. In this contract, the person who is taking the asset is called the leasee, right? And the person who is giving the asset is called the leaseor. So um, I want you to understand. So when I say A leases an asset, it means A is the one taking the asset, all right? So A leases a portable kiosk. from a portable kiosk from B all right at Kotuka International Airport terminal now B determines where the kiosk should be located at all times. All right. And B Best out all costs regarding location changes of the kiosk. All right, so the idea is that. B can tell you that today we'll put the kiosk here. Tomorrow put it at a different place. The next day put it at a different place. In that case, the question is, is there a lease? That's the question. Think about it in a minute and give me Compare what we have done, what, what the things we have put down in identifying the lease, and tell me if this contract has a lease in it. Is there a lease? Per the definition and the identification. Per this short scenario that I've given you, is there a lease? Yes. Rampa, you are writing on my screen. Please, can you check that? Yes, who has an idea? Somebody should try. Okay, so let me try. All right. Okay. Uh, I just joined. So. Uh, there's, no, there's no is uh, the definition that we have identified is list. He said there should be the right to control the use mm -hmm. of the identifiable assets. But for this one, the illustration, 
the, uh, uh, the lessor is controlling the assets for the lessee. So the lessee has no right to control and use the, uh, to control the use of the assets. All right, that's awesome. Thank you. So there is no lease. So you see, the fact that a question may say a lease is doesn't mean, mean it's actually a lease. So you need to what analyze it carefully. All right. So take note of that. So always watch out. Ask yourself. Uh, so I could add that the, the this whatever he has rented, I could add that it's for three years. All right, and he leased it for a consideration of an amount. But the fact that this one is not fulfilled means that there is no lease. All the three must happen. All right, so good. You have spotted that, and that is very, very good. So that is how you identify a lease. I can go ahead and give you a typical, another example. So uh, let's say you are into a transport business. So uh, if you are in a transport business, let's say you provide services of such nature all right now in an instance where somebody leases a car from you all right the person has leased a car from you for like two years so that you'll be using the your cars now if if there is a problem in the car I mean, the person can now, I, I'm giving you a different scenario now. If there's a problem in the car, the person can come back and say there's a problem in the car, so change the car for me. But once you change the car, the person determines where, where to go with the car. The person who leads the asset determines where to go with the car and do whatever he wants to do with the car. In that case, so you know, you know sometimes people are rent cars around, right? People rent cars around. And so let's say you have gone to lease one, all right, for a period of time and you have paid money. Now, you realize that the car you took, you have the liberty to go everywhere with it. I mean, there is no restriction. However, you saw that there is a problem with the car. So you went to the car rental service to say there's a problem with the car. Give me a different car. In that case, uh, it, it, is there a lease in that one? Did you get did you get my question? Yes, sir. Yeah, in, in that case, is there a lease in that one? Okay, I mean I will say no. On what grounds? Because he said, if you must own the asset and control it, so no, you you, 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 you don't own the asset. Too. I didn't say you should. Yeah, own yeah, the yeah asset. you control. Uh -huh. The controlling. So if if there's a effort, you have to uh, bear the the damage and repair it. Or oh, as for control and repairs, is a different thing. You know? Control means that I can use the right to use. All right. But in terms of my using, I realize that the car you gave me, there's a problem. So I'm coming to change it. The fact that I, when we say you are controlling something, it doesn't mean you are bearing the cost of its repair, but you determine how to use it. That is what we mean by control. Please, do you get okay. it? It's like yes. renting a house. If I rent somebody's house, I've leased the house, and I've paid money, then I realize that the tiles in the room are bad. The fact that I can come back to you and say, please, the tiles in the room you gave me are bad, come and change it, doesn't mean I don't have control of my room. Are you getting it? Please, are you getting it? Yes, sir. All right. So in that case, if you take the maintenance thing out, you agree with me that in that scenario, there is a lease, right? Yes, sir. All right. So that is how a lease is. All right. But at your level, they don't really, they don't really trouble you with these kind of things. 
in the identification. What they really want you to do is basically the computation, all right? FR is about how to do the figures. Let me hereby say that there are exceptions to lease. The exceptions to lease are short term. If the thing is below 12 months, you lease something below 12 months, I mean, you can treat it directly to your PL. I mean, you lease like, like rent one year. You don't have to treat it under IFRS 16. You can just put it in your PL directly. And so, and low value items. If you lease something, if you lease somebody's phone, for example, it's a low value item. That one, you don't apply IFRS 16 to it. Just treat it directly in your PL. All right. So, treat payment to PL. All right. So, that, that is that. All right. Now, let's come to the big deal where your exam says you should focus on, which we call the lease accounting. That is where your exams says we should actually focus on. Guys, just a minute. All right, so let's let's focus on how we do achieve our second objective, which is the uh, lease accounting. How do we do the accounting for the lease? So let's look at lease accounting or let's see accounting. Now, in, in previous years, when it comes to the let's see accounting, what we were doing under IAS 17 was that we would determine something called uh, finance lease and operating lease, all right? We used to do that. But in IFRS 16, when it comes to the lease accounting or the let's see accounting, there is a nothing like operating lease. We now use the right of use accounting base. So the asset that you lease is called a right of use asset. So that is the name of the asset. So we we don't we never go back to those days we used to say leasehold property. It's nothing like a leasehold property again. The name of those things are right of use asset. Okay, so right of use is the asset. That's the name, right of use asset. So that is that. Then it's a lease. Uh, lease is different from a purchase. In a purchase, you just buy the thing and you get the asset. That is IAS 16. Lease, you are taking the thing and you will be making payments periodically. Like the way when you rent your house, you make payments periodically, okay? So that is how a lease is. So there is the right of use asset and there is the lease liability. So the monies that you'll be paying in future for the asset, the lease liability. So that is that. These are the things we need in the lease or let's see accounting. All right. Now, when you are faced with any lease question, you need to do the let's see liability aspect first. Please, did you hear me? Do the let's see liability aspect what? First. First. All right, so you do the lease liability first. What goes into the lease liability? Now, remember, accounting is as and when the thing okay, not as and when cash and cash and equivalent are paid or received for it. So immediately the day you are doing the lease contract, you will have to do the present value of, of all the lease payments. Present value of lease payments that have that are yet please the word yet is very important yet to be paid or that have not been paid or that are yet to be paid is english 
yet to be paid or all these payments that have not yet been paid so yet to be paid or not yet or have not yet been paid so look at that those ones that have not yet been paid all right and normally those ones will include the fixed payments so it's like when you rent a, a house the periodic payments that you'll be making all right those ones that you've not paid yet then Check for any variable payment. When we say a variable payment, it means that maybe you used to pay 5,000, 5,000, then they change it to 6,000. So maybe you have lived something for five years. The first two years, you, you pay 5,000. Then the second, the third year is like 6,000. So it has, it has changed. It's no more fixed, like 5,5 five again. It has changed, become a variable, all right? Then... Uh, if there is any residual guarantee, what is a residual guarantee? You see, residual value guarantee simply means that if you, let's say you have leased somebody's asset. Now, if you lease the person's asset, let, let's say the asset has a useful life of six years. You have leased it for five years. Then you tell the person that, I will buy the asset that one year left. So after you leasing the asset and using it, you will buy it. All right. You will buy it. So that you buy it at a specific price. So you guarantee that you buy it. That one too, because you have you have decided to buy it, you have added it as part of your contract to buy it. It becomes a present obligation for you in future just as we used to do present value of future dismantling cost all right so if you are in present times and you see that you will be incurring dismantling cost in the future you know you see we pv that one to as part of the cost of the asset when we're doing is 16 so the same idea happens here so if you have guaranteed that you will be taking the asset then that is that all right another one is any option if you the exercise price of a purchase option if so if you do the residual value guarantee it can be in a form of an exercise price of a of purchasing option so the person can give you the option to purchase this the thing when you have used it all right for some time but this one, the size price of a purchase option, you will add it to your PV only if you are certain that you will exercise it. All right. If you are reasonably certain. That. The purchase option will be exercised. If you know you will not exercise it, then forget about it. All right. Then the last one will be any terminal penalties. If you know you are going to destroy the contract or cancel the contract, then any penalty ahead of you, you PV it to. All right. If you are to okay. Now, all this, we are saying that you PV, you PV. What is the discount factor you are going to use to PV? What is the discount factor? The discount factor you are going to use to PV, please, is what we call the implicit rate. The implicit rate. If you don't get the implicit rate, if the implicit rate is not reasonably available or, or uh, uh, certainly available, then you will use incremental borrowing rate. Please, you only use the incremental borrowing rate when the implicit rate is not readily available. All right, so you use this. 
you only use this one when the implicit is not readily available. Please kindly take note of that. See, when we say these things, these are what the examiner will drive on. So he will give you an implicit rate and tell you that as at the time of the lease, it is not readily available, readily available. Then he will give you another incremental rate. So be careful. These are the nitty gritties. All right. Now, let's look at what goes under the right of the use asset. Now, the right of use asset. The reason why I told you you do this aspect first is because everything you've done here becomes the first line item over here. So the right of use begins with the lease liability, the PV of the lease liability that you have done. So the PV. So everything you do here is the first item here. So imagine if you get the side wrong. It means this side too, you've gotten it wrong. All right. Then you add, you see, we said here, it is things that are yet to be paid. What if you have already paid some already? So you have to add the lease payment you have made. All right. Lease payment made at or before commencement date. Commencement date. But if there is any incentive, less the incentive. Less incentive, if any. If there is any incentive. What do we mean by incentive? When you pay the money to the person, the person say, oh, Charlie, they take back some few coins so the, whatever you took back is, is like a discount all right so you left that one then right now everything goes back to like ias 16 so you add any initial direct cost any initial direct cost it's an asset so any as any uh cost incurred in bringing the asset into its useful state all right so any initial direct costs you bring that then pv all right, estimated dismantling cost. PV of what? Future dismantling cost. Like IAS 16. All right. So that is that. That forms, this becomes your initial measurement. So that is how we deal with the initial measurements. All right, of Ellis. Please, any question at this point? Any question at this point? Because we will be looking at the figures soon, how we do the computation. All right. Now, there is no question at this point. Then the next thing I need to do is the subsequent measurement. And that is where, when you are doing your publication, it becomes uh, very, very important. The subsequent measurement but before i even do the subsequent measurement let's talk about the least term all right the least term you know we said that you are leasing the thing for a period of time that time that time is it includes the non-cancellable period so the agreed period okay if we agreed it for five years then the non-cancellable period is what? The five years. That is that. Now, if you will be exercising the option to extend the lease, then that one to become part of the lease term. All right? So let's say we agreed five years, but there is an option in that that says that uh, you can extend the lease for additional one year. So that one year become part of the lease term. All right? So period any period uh, covered by an option, an option to extend the lease. Now, it can only be part of the lease term if and only if you are reasonably certain that you 
will extend the term. So if you know you will not extend it, then it can't be part. All right. It can't be part. Of course, if I'm not extending it, why should it be part of my least term? I will not be extending it. It's, it's as simple as that. That is that. All right. So please take note of this. So number one is what the non-cancelable period. Number two is the extra period you may have to exercise. All right. So that is that. Take note of that. Now let's look at the subsequent measurement. So the subsequent measurement of the asset, the right of use asset, is an asset and we know how we do subsequent measurement. So uh, for the right of use asset, just as you do PP subsequent measurement, what do you do? You depreciate it. So the right of use asset, subsequent measurement, you depreciate it. All right. Uh, we use the cost model for that. All right. So you depreciate it. Once you depreciate it, so the depreciation will go to your PL. And after that, you get your carrying amount. All right. Which will go to your SOFP. So that is that. <clears throat> now, what about the subsequent measurement of the lease liability? The lease liability. So subsequent measurement of the lease liability, you need to you need to distinguish between whether the thing is paid in arrears. I mean, when we say arrears, it means that it's like my mother's house. In my mother's house, when you you will live in it, he she doesn't take advance. You will live in it, and every month that you live in, you come and pay your monthly rent. She does that just to have a feel of the fact that she is also working and she is taking monthly salary. That's 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 how she operates. So it means that if the payments will be making will be made at the end of the year, then it means that it is what arrears in arrears. Now, if it is in arrears, what you will need is that you will need the years. And please, in your exam, just do only two years, okay? Only two years. <coughs> only two years. So you have year one, year two. Then you will need, you will need your balance brought down. The balance brought down is the initial measurement, okay? Is the initial measurement. So if you get your initial measurement wrong, there is a whole lot of things that can be wrong for you. So you need your balance brought down, the initial measurement. Then, since it is in arrears, you will need your finance cost. Now, the finance cost is based on the implicit or the effective rate or the incremental rate. So that is the rate that you will use. The implicit, and please listen carefully because we will be getting there soon. Is the implicit or the effective rate or the incremental rate. So when you get that rate, you multiply it by the initial measurement and you get your value, all right? So that is that. Your initial measurement is a value, all right? It's a value probably here. So you bring it here. You do the interest on it. Then you go ahead and the payment that you have made, as for the payment, is the periodic payment. So you take it out. The payment you make at the end of the year, now you get your balance carried down. So this is it. So your balance carried down is this one plus this minus this. You get your balance carried down. Balance carried down for this year becomes balance brought down for this year. Then you still calculate your interest here. Then you less your payment then you get this. All right. Now, once you have been able to do this, this aspect is finance cost. And that one will go to where? Your PL. 
And this one that you see here, the figure that you see here is your NCL, non-current liability. Then the difference between this one and this one, the difference is your current liability. So ladies and gentlemen, anytime there is a lease in your publication question, there is a minimum of five ticks for you. Tick one is this, tick two, this, tick three is this. Then when you come to the, uh, the right of use assets, there is tick four, this, then tick five, this. So five ticks. So imagine if you get it wrong, you are losing five ticks. What if the payment is in advance? So you pay before you live in. You know, some houses are like that. You pay before you live in. Um, that one, you do your two years. So the same thing, your balance brought down. The same thing is the initial measurement. But payment is in advance, means that payment will come before the interest. So there will be payment here. The payment will come here. All right. Then the balance or the subtotal, which is this one minus this. All right. So let me just draw something here. So this one minus, uh, minus this you get here. Then your finance cost now comes in. Don't forget this is the implicit. So your finance cost will now be calculated on this. All right. So then you get your balance carried down. The balance carried down, therefore, is this total plus this. All right. So that is what you have. Then you continue. Balance carried down becomes balance brought down. So you get your subtotal. You do your finance cost. Then balance carried down. So over here, here, what you need to know is that your NCL will be here not here it will be here all right that's your ncl your finance cost is here which will go to your spl what about the current liability the current liability is the difference between this ncl and this balance so that will be what your cl as a matter of fact the cl the CL is always equal to this value when it is in advance. It's always equal to the next payment to be made. All right. So take note of that. Please, any question? Because this sums up uh, the lessee accounting. What we need to do now is to actually um, pick up questions and deal with them. All right. So... Is there any question you have for me? Now, be careful. In some questions, they combine the lease component and the non-lease component together. So always know how to identify the lease. At your level, I think they, they won't trouble you with those things. But in level three, they may combine lease components and non-lease components together. But at your level, they don't do that for you. So... Um, that 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 is that. They will give you a contract, and in that contract, there is a lease component and there is non-lease component. When it happens like that, you need to be splitting it. You need to be splitting it. But at FR level, I don't think uh, they will trouble you with those things. All right. Now, any question? Any question? Because without any question, it means that we are good to go and we are supposed to be solving some examples now. All right. So let's take some examples. And this is the illustration. All right. So now um, we have Peter. who leased an item of equipment for five years for the start of, uh, from the start of the financial year, January, 2019. The initial payment was made on January, 2019. Um, those of you who have done 
financial management, you do know that we don't PV figures at year zero. If any figure that is already at year zero is already PV'd. So you can't, we, we PV things that are in future. All right. So take note of that. That is why when I was doing the formula for you, I said PV those ones that are yet to. All right. So that is that was that is the reason. Okay. So if we continue this, we said that the initial payment of four thousand was made on January twenty nineteen. What does that tell you? Is it at the beginning or at the end? So is it arrears or advance? Hello. Yeah. Advance. Advance. All right. Now, that is what we are told. That is the initial payment. That is the initial payment. And we are told that then the series of four future payments were made each year on 1st January. So it confirms the advance. So the table that we will be using will be the advance one, not the arrears one. All right. Now we are told that the implicit rate is... 3% and the present value of the future lease payments. Future lease payments of the as of the useful uh, and we have the useful life of the asset. Now, let, before I even solve this question, let me ask you this. You see the, the right of use asset, we said we would depreciate it here. But we also know that depreciation is dividing the thing over its useful life. All right. Now, so let me ask you a question. If the asset, the right of use asset is having a useful life of five years, all right, but we did our lease term is 10 years, which of these years <laughs> are you going to use to depreciate the asset? Yes, who is answering me? Which of these years will you use to do the asset? The asset itself has five years useful life, but you have leased the asset for 10 years. Which of these will you use? Second scenario, the asset has 10 years useful life, but you have leased it for five years. So in these scenarios, which ones are you going to use? So at least you have to use five years. <clears throat> Under which one? There are two scenarios. If you say five years, I don't know which question you are answering. Under the scenario one. Scenario one, you use five years. Okay. What about scenario two? So scenario two, the useful life is uh, the useful life of the asset is ten. Useful life is the ten years, but we our lease term is five years. Yes. What about that one? Okay. I think we still use the, the ten years of the useful life of the assets because that's what we are going to use to do. I mean do the depreciation and then also going to our accounting that we report on. So you said this one is 10 years. Anybody with a different opinion? Is there anyone with any other opinion? Rampa, I've not heard you. Second Emmanuel, I've not actually heard you. Yeah, I, I was in the car. I was driving when you, when you call, so I just arrived. Home. Oh, okay. Uh, I just get home, so. All right. So, yes, this one, the useful life of the asset is five years. Yes, I agree, but I don't agree with this one. You see, 
the useful life of the asset is 10 years. We have leased it. We just leased it for five years. In our hands, it is five years. It can't be 10 years. Are you getting it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's very, it's tricky by simple. This one too, you cannot, the problem is that you cannot depreciate an asset over and above the asset's useful life. The useful life of the asset itself is five years. The fact that you have done agreement with it for 10 years doesn't mean you can't, the useful life of the asset is five years. Come on. So this one uh, is 10 years, but we also list it for five years. The remaining five years, when we give the asset back to the person, the lessor, he can continue with his depreciation. So in doing the depreciation, we use the lower of the useful life and what? The least term, whichever is lower. All right. So that is that. So that is what you are supposed to know. Now let's come back to our question so that we can actually uh, close it out. So we have, uh, we said we should do the extract from the, for the financial statement as at uh, 2019, even though this one says would be as follows. We are solving the question. So I said, what do you do first? Yes. Initial measurement, what do you do first? Which one do you do first? The least liability. The least liability. Good. So we have right of use and we have least liability. So don't forget, it's a PV you are doing. So, and I gave you how to spot the discount factor. All right. But in this question, we are told that they've done the PV for us. They said that it's 3%. And the present value of the future lease payment is 14000 868 what how how many years is the lease term in this contract what is how many years what's the lease term five years five years all right so the future lease payment that they've done for us how many years do you think that one was for That one also is five years. Five years. Yes, anybody else? It's not five years. You see, and that is the trick, and that is where you always get it wrong. I told you that if the person pays advance, the advance is today. How can you say Sika Wachianende is also a future? It's five years. Okonhai will be dying for five years, okay? Or see to your first year and advance. Wait to your. How many future payments are left for you? Four. Exactly. Four. And that is why you the student always get it wrong. That is the only problem students face. And I've told you, you don't PV money today. The, the thing is in today. How can you PV the money of today? And I, I keep saying this. Please, who is that? I keep saying that we PV future payment. We don't PV. I mean, today, today, can you present value and amount today? No, sir. Yeah, because it's already in today. And that is why when I was teaching you, I told you that, and please, these, these things, I, I, I keep saying it. When I'm doing the, the, uh, the introduction or I'm teaching the standard, pay attention so that when it comes to the application, you don't founder. You see, it says that PV of payment that are what? You know, when I, was, I, I got here, I was stressing on it that much. That are yet to be paid. Which ones in these questions are yet to be paid? Is it not the four years? As far as we are concerned, the very first year, see, look at this. Then, and then series of four future payments, four, were made each year. So the future, that is, that is, 
that is it. So the PV will be for four years. And they've done it for you. PV of future payment, they said is how much? 14868 So that is that. PV of future payment. That are yet to be made. Now, so the right of use asset. So you see, the total liability is actually 918 because this is it. He has paid one already. The total liability is 18867, but he has paid 4000 already. So the part that he is liable to pay is the remaining, the future ones. So you see that what I gave you here. I told you that when you are doing this part, the lease liability will come, which is what? 14000 Then lease payment made at or before commencement. How much was made at or before commencement? 4000 Do you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So payment is 4000 Then the lease liability that you have done is what? Fourteen. Eight six eight. So together, the value of the asset is what eighteen eight six eight. If there were any direct cost or anything, you add add. If there is any future dismantling cost, you add add. So this is the value of the asset. Now, so this is how you get your figures. Of course, those of you who have the manual, you realize that there are examples where you have to do the PV in, like. You will be do you will be the ones who will be PVing the value. Everything we've said is here. There are illustrations where they will give you the discount factor. Then you will be you will be doing the PV. All right, you will be doing the PV of the payment. So you will get this. Then so you bring it here. If there is any direct cost, you add. If there is any reimbursement, like we said, less incentive, you will less. Then you get your figures. So now in this particular example like this, you realize that your lease liability, this is your lease liability, the right of use, this one, yeah, so this is what you have. Then you go ahead and do the subsequent measurement, whether it is arrears or in advance. So coming back to the question that we are dealing with, uh, so what we need to now do is to do the subsequent measurement. I think I've passed it. What we need to now do is the subsequent measurement. So as far as this part is concerned for subsequent measurement, we will depreciate it over how many years? Five years, right? So when you do five years, what will be the depreciation? I think you will get 7334. Confirm. Use your calculators and confirm. So we will have this one going to our SPL for depreciation. Please, I'm waiting for the confirmation. Then get me the carrying yeah, amount. Yeah, that's it. That's, so what, that's so what it. will be the carrying amount? This was the carrying amount. To be 15094. 15094. All right. So that is what you do so that you put it in your PNL and balance sheet. All right. Then let's go to the subsequent measurement for the liability part. So let's draw our table. This one is in advance. So it means we will need the years we have to just do and only two. So one, two, uh, we have balance brought down and we have what what will come for what will come here is advanced. What will come here? The payment. The payments. All right. Then we have the total, the subtotal. Then we have the finance cost. Then we have our balance. Now, now anytime balance carried down, anytime you have the a question like this, just be careful. Just be careful. You see, you are doing it for the liability. If it is an advance. Put the whole at the four thousand before that they paid, and deduct it again, so that your total will still come back to this value. So the total thing 
is add the 4,000, make it 18,868, and deduct the 4,000 that they paid immediately so that the liability left will come back to this. That is your liability. All right, the first year, the very first year, that is what happened. They paid early. So it was 18,000 and they paid 4,000 out of it. Don't put the, if it is in advance, be careful. All right. So that is that. Then what is the interest rate to use? 3%. So do the 3% and give me the value here. Let's continue the table. So the trick is that don't put 14 here and deduct. If you put 14 here and deduct, you're actually doing like the second year because the future payment starts second year. I'm waiting for the figures. The finance cost is 446. 446. Uh -huh. So what will be here? Oh, people get involved and uh, everybody take calculator. It's rehearsals. 15, 15, 314. Don't forget, you be the one to be doing this thing in the exam. Start practicing. 15314 becomes your balance board down here. Payment is 4,000. So you have 11,314. Yes, what will we have here? If you want to know you are right, you can do for all the years, all the five years, your balance will be zero. But we don't need that. Unless the question asks you to do that, don't do that. You'll be wasting three, time. Three, three, nine. Three, three, nine. Yes, yeah, so what will be here? 11, 653. 11, 653. 653. 653. 653. So, um, let me, let me dodge this. Yes. Who can tell me the figures that will go to the PNL from here, the NCL and the CL? Yes. Who can give me the, the figures? Yeah. Okay, so for the NCL, um, we'll have the year two um, total, which is 11314. NCL. Yeah, I'm listening now. And then the current one will be the um the different let me cut points there. Oh, what is delaying us, guys? We are all in, supposed to be involved. Why have you left it to some few? So the the NC is it the NC will be eleven three one four. Is it three one four three five eleven six? The total, five. the sub, the sub total, the NC. Uh huh. So that is what I was waiting for. It can't be. This is in advance. So this is what the NC. Mm -hmm. Say that, but you didn't hear. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, and I yeah. used on the wrong thing. Eh? Yeah. Oh, but the seal, as a more chebby say, I don't know why. That will be uh, the difference. It will be 4,000. 
Uh, so I don't know why you are delaying. Is the difference between this and this? And I even drew a graph to us to tell you that it is oh it is always this. This is what I did. So if you were if you actually listen to me carefully, you shouldn't be struggling. This I even showed you. This is it, and the C here is the difference between this and this. But it is always the figure here. So if you do different between this and this, you always get the four thousand. All right. What about the finance costs? The finance cost will be the uh, the four four six. Yeah, the four four six. All right. So that is that. So if you get a publication question where this one become a note note five note that these are what you do to pick out the figures to put in your balance sheet and your p l all right so that is that that that, that is that now let's see if we can get another uh illustration then we 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 move on all right so assuming this one was in areas you change the position all right so that's basically all about it okay so let's let's achieve point num the last point which is a uh, sale or lease back sale or lease back so uh this is the last one to do we are not doing lease or accounting it's not examinable <clears throat> at your level sorry so sale or lease back now in sale or lease back what we are saying is that the person sells the asset let's say a will sell the asset to b i'm going to give you a work to do another exercise to do on the lease very soon so this one, A sells the asset to B, and A leases the asset from B. So A is a seller, B is the buyer of the asset. A again is the lessee, and B is what? The lessor. So that is what happens. He sells it, but he leases it back. Now. What we are supposed to know is that, let's look at the scenario, if the transferring of this asset to B is not a sale. He has given the asset to B, but it's not a sale. So that is what you see here. Now, if the transfer is not a sale, then it means that A hasn't sold the asset. The asset is still for A. All right, so it means you continue to recognize the asset in A because he hasn't so he hasn't actually uh, 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 sold the asset. All right. So as for B, you can't also recall that you have purchased an asset. Then the question is that then what happens to the money that B will give to A if you have not sold something? and you take money, it means that the money that you have taken is a loan. So you will recognize what? Loan liability. If you have not sold something to somebody but takes money, the money you take is a liability. And as far as this man is concerned, he has given you money that he wants to collect back, so he will record a receivable. Please, are you getting it? So the double entry, therefore, for this one is to debit cash. You have received money. By your credit, is what? A liability. As far as this person is concerned, he has given somebody money. He needs to collect back. So receivables is his debit, and he has paid cash out. Please, is that understood? When the transfer is not a sale, any money you collect is a liability. What if the transfer is a sale? Then it means that 
since you've sold it, you need to de-recognize the asset. You need to take it out of your books. And this person will now record it in his books. When you lease it back, then you do everything we've done today. Lease. Determine whether it's in arrears or in advance. Then do what the, all the things that we, we've done today. Please, have you gotten the scenario? Hello, class. Have you gotten the scenario? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So that is that. Let's fish it out with an example. So on J January 2011, Acrobeto sells an... Uh, all these things are past questions in your uh, this thing. So those of the... the those of you who have already, I think it's Emmanuel. When you get the uh, past question, uh, question and bank, it's on, it's not only CA past question that is in that book. It's ACC is there, and today I even realized that I put an ACC question in the book, and I realized that. And you see, one thing I am doing is that the the questions in IC, I am solving it myself. I'm not I'm not actually taking the solution from IC. I'm solving it myself. So when I was solving one of the past questions, it looked so familiar, and I realized that, oh, uh, oh, this one is just a copy and paste from that ACCA question. They just changed the names. Yeah, so <laughs> I was solving the thing, and I knew I have solved it before. So I just went to copy the solutions to paste. So sometimes, honestly, they pick up questions from there. Most times. It's not sometimes. Most times. Because it's not easy to set questions over. It's not easy. So they just pick it and change the names, the currency signs, and all those things. So you, if you, if you get the book and you practice, it's highly probable that you may be seeing questions in your exams that you have solved before. All right. So now it says Acrobeto sells item of machinery to Santo uh, at its fair value, three million. The asset had a current value of twelve, one point two. Sorry, prior to sale. The sale represents the satisfaction of performance obligation, which means that he has sold it in accordance with IFRS 15. Now, Acrobeto enters into the contract with Santo for the right of use of the asset for the next five years. Annual payment is 500,000, uh, five, or 500,000 are due to be are due to due at the end of each year. End of each year. The rate is 10%. The present value of the lease, annual lease payment is 1.9. It should be in CDs, 1.9 CDs. The remaining useful life of the asset is much greater than the lease term. Of course, even if it is greater than the lease term, we use the lower. All right. So that is that. How do you go around this situation? So first of all, he sold the asset. So you need to de-recognize it. This one, the transfer is a sale. The question said that it satisfies the performance obligation. So the transfer is a sale. So if it is a sale, you need to de-recognize the asset. All right. You need to de-recognize the asset. So that is what you will do. What is the value of the asset in your books? If it is not a sale, please record a liability. So now let's find out if it meets, like I said, if it meets, so you see clearly that uh, what we have here is that Acrobeto should remove the current amount of the asset from his book since it meets the definition. So you have to de-recognize the asset. Do you remember how we... So when you de-recognize the asset, certainly you may have some gain or loss on disposal. So this one, you, you first do disposal accounting, all right? Then when you finish the disposal accounting, the next thing to do is that when you lease it, you are going to do lease like we've just done. Do the PV of the lease liability, get your right of use, and do the subsequent measurement. So watch, let's let's see. He saw the asset. The current amount of the asset is uh 1.2, but he sold it for what? 3 million. So let's de-recognize the asset. Well, how do you de-recognize an asset? Yes, who remembers? I told you, I showed you the, when we were doing PPE, disposal. All right, then you do accumulated depreciation, then you do disposal account. But here, I don't want to use the account anymore. But what you are supposed to do is that 
you will credit the asset so that it cancels it out of your books. So you would debit disposal account. with the cost of the, the current amount of the asset, which is 1.2 million, you will credit the cost, the asset. We are not told the, <clears throat> the cost of the asset. So we, we, but we know that the current amount of the, we know the current amount of the asset. So we should have the cost of the asset to take it off. All right. And also take off the, accumulated depreciation from the accumulated depreciation account all right so that is that but as far as we are concerned like you see what i've done here you you really don't know the cost of the asset so you can use the 1.2 now i share uh what do you call it uh i could share the disposal account in him with its accumulated depreciation so that is the entries that you see here but you see, you have collected money, proceeds. So the proceeds that you receive, cash, 3 million, you have taken 3 million. Your credit for this one is also the disposal account. All right, you credit the disposal account. So you see in that disposal account, there is another credit. So you will now get some gain or loss on disposal. So your gain or loss on disposal, when you take, what will be the difference? 1.2 and 3, what will be the difference? One point eight. One point eight. Good. So you have gain or loss on disposal. 1.8. So, so that is what we have here. So at this point, we are done. We are done. But the asset is now leased back. So we now come to do right of use. And what? Lease liability. Then they told us that the PV is, this one is at the end of each year. So it's in arrears. So the PV, the annual amount, all right, annual amount is 500,000, which you have to PV. Did they PV it for us? The present value of the annual lease payment, they've done it for us, which is 1.9 million. 1.9 million. So that is it. So you have this one to what? Uh, PV of lease life as your right of use, 1.9 million. Then later on, we will do the subsequent measurement. So you will do the amortization table for this. This one, you depreciate it. How many useful life did they lease it for? Five years, right? So you depreciate it over five years. Then your lease implicit rate for your table is also what? 10%. So this is it. You do your 10%. And that is what you see here. So you see your, we, we will do our gain. The gain is what you people showed me here. So we are good. So now how do we do the lease table for this one? So you do your year. So yeah, this one is 20, 2001 or 2011. When did the lease happen? 2011. So... If they say we should account for this at this day, then we end it here. That is initial measurement. But if we want to continue for subsequent measurement, just because we have learned something today, we will have our 2011 and we will do another year to it. What will be our balance carried down? Our balance brought down. How much will be our balance brought down? Yes. 1.9. 1.9. What comes first? This one... This one is at the end of the year, least uh, arrears. So what comes next? So the finance cost will come. The finance cost. The rate is 
ten percent. So it will be what zero point nine or ten percent of one point nine is what zero point one nine. Is that it? Payment yes, is payment is yes. five hundred. So it will be zero point five. Five hundred. Yeah. So you have your that is when I put millions here. So you have your when when you subtract, what will you get? So it will be this plus this minus this. Then you get this, then you continue, then you pick out the issues. But don't forget, if the transfer is not a lease, all that you need to do is to take the money, debit your cash, then credit liability. All right, so that, that is that. Yes, who is giving me the final figures? It will be 1.59. 1.59. 1 so 1.59 will be here. 10% will be 0 0.16. You have 0 0.5. So what will be here? Then tell me where which one will go to NCL, CL, and all those things. Uh, I want you to be fast because I'm going to give you a work to do to see if you, you that one, you will do it yourself. I'm going to give you a, a past question. One point two five. So, how do we fish out our things? Of course, the asset we will depreciate it over five years, so you get the carrying amount and the what do we call it, the depreciation. But so, which one will be in our NCL, CL, then finance cost, then get me the depreciation. And also give me the carrying amount. Give me the five figures. Yes. Oh, please, the figures. Okay. The depreciation is 0 0.38. 0 0.38. Mm -hmm. The current amount is 1.52. 1.52. Then the finance cost is 0 0.19. Finance cost is 0.19. Mm -hmm. Then the, the uh, NCL is 1.25. 1, 1. 1.25, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the CL, the CL um, is um, 0 0.34. 0 0.34. Are you guys having struggling struggles in finding the CL? Because it looks as if you delay a lot when it comes to that part. So who answered me? Who answered that one? Emmanuel, that's you, right? Yeah. Can you show them how you did it? Because it looks as if when it gets to that part, there's a whole lot of you people really don't know how to get it. So how did you get it? So is the difference between the 1.59 and then the 1.25? That's all. All right. So that's that. I want you guys to solve this question for me. So this is your question, question two, seven marks. Solve that. You had what? 
A depreciation is 9,600. 9,600. And the finance cost is 1,722. 1,722. The when it comes to the, the current amount, the current value, mm -hmm. that one is 38,000. 38,000. Yes, 400. 38,400. Then when you come to the NCL, that one is 16,750. 16,750. And then the um, CL is 6,500. Hey, so that one there, you had the same thing. No, All right, anybody else? Augustine. Augustine, okay, let's move. Okay, the depreciation at 10,900. Hey, figures is different, crowd. Okay, move on. Then the CR 43,600. 43,600. Okay. Then the NCL had. That's it, 320. Then CLS is 3,500. Why, wow, the thing is in advance. In terms of no, the, uh, easy to see, Abby. <laughs> then the finance cost are 3,320. 3,320. All right. Is there anyone else? Rampa, did you do it? No, sir. Hmm. Okay. I'm not following. All right. So let's go to the solution to see question two solution. Okay. Okay. I think this one is the correct one. Depreciation. Finance cost C A C L S. All right. So the my people, what happened? <laughs> what happened? No. Okay. So you see, um, the second one, I tried that one. Okay, I had that, the 96 division, but I saw that in the question, it talks about it made a deposit uh, oh, so you of 9,970. Right so I have I added it back to the... You added the... You added the, the deposit back to the depreciation. The nine nineteen thousand nine seventy two back to the forty eight yeah back to the uh forty eight thousand. I I don't I don't follow. Okay, so if if five years and the initial deposit is nineteen, and five year annual payment of this, so you have to be PV. You have to PV the, I say an annual five payments in of 6,500 in advance, commencing from, did you see this date and this date? Uh, so it means the first 6,500 is also on the, it's also part of the, it's, also, of, uh, it's uh -huh. also should go in here. So he made a deposit. So the deposit, the deposit will be 19 plus another 6,500. Because that on that yes. same date, the first six thousand five hundred will happen. So what you are actually going to PV, uh, and they said that the fair value of the vehicle and the PV of the lease payment, which which what what is the PV of the lease payment? This is the lease payment. So they PV everything for you to give. Uh, because I was wondering, ah. How did you guys do the eight percent PV? I said movie in terms of so now the the question did the PV for you, so you have to be careful. That that is where the problem. Maybe I think you had it wrong. Maybe you didn't check dates. So yeah, you didn't check dates. Yeah. So have you seen what we have you seen it? 
Aha. So that is it. So be careful now. So now you know. You know that you need to be very, very careful when it comes to... You see, the upfront payment will now be 19000 plus there. The upfront payment. Yeah, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Because that one too was on the first. It was on the first. So you need to be very, very careful. So good work done, Emmanuel. So, uh, so Augustine, what happened? Yeah, Augustine. Sir, so I've actually solved it before. That is why I got it correct. Ah, who got it correct? Is it Ima? Or yeah, I've solved it before. Ah, you've solved the past questions. You see, uh -huh. so you see how it can be when uh, you have actually practiced something. So, I mean, guys, you have to practice more. You have to practice more. So that is that is the trick in the question. That is the trick. Because those are apart from those things, this is not difficult. So there will always be something small be our but the examiner wants to use to trick you. Because if you look at this, the deposit is this fine. We don't have problem. But this six thousand five hundred that they are going to be paying every year. Is commencing from this, and this is the date they are making the list. So it means that advance payment first one is the six thousand five hundred. So it means that the initial deposit will be this one plus the six thousand five hundred. Then the remaining are things you PV. All right, you because you don't PV your zero figures. All right, so please just be careful. Be careful. All right, now the time in the hour that is left, I want to focus on IFRS 9 and financial instruments. <laughs> 